Keep going. Yeah. Make those lights. Make those lights. Come on, sir. Come on. Over the red one. Over the red one. Six more. Yeah. Six more. Come on, Rusty. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Here we go. Sergei Baltacha worked hard to become one of Russia's top footballers. So the Soviets allowed him to come to the West to kick off a new career with Ipswich Town. He's been here a year now, and at times, it's been quite a strain. Sergei Baltacha was one of the biggest names in Soviet football before he joined Ipswich from Dynamo Kiev. He made 40 international appearances. He even managed a goal in the World Cup. It's on days like these that Sergei Baltacha must wonder if it's all been worthwhile. It's bad enough being in the reserves, watched by some of the supporters who doubt whether he can cope with the demands of the game here. But being the first Russian international to play in England doesn't guarantee immunity from injuries, and Sergei has been very unlucky. Today's diagnosis, damaged ankle ligaments. He could be out for weeks. Pass it. Communication is another problem. George Scanlon has helped out as his interpreter, but even he can't help Sergei when he's in trouble out on the pitch. Go on, Dale! Go on, Dale! Sit it down! Just can't handle it. Just can't handle it. I hate being out of football and not playing football. I'm a professional footballer. I like to be active in my, my profession. And, of course, my spirits are immediately very low as soon as I know that I won't be playing, that I'm out of action. This season has been really, uh, so far, a disappointment all round. He's had so many different injuries. He's played one first-team game. Um, I think he's had knee, back, hamstring and oh, ankle and Achilles tendon situation. So he's really had a lot of difficulties. And once he gets over that, I think he'll come into contention again. I'm very fortunate. I think that I've been a symbol of the changes which are taking place in the Soviet Union at the moment, that this opportunity arose and I had the chance to come to such a club as Ipswich. But it's been thanks to the Piristroika and Glasnost which is taking place in the Soviet Union. This is Sergei Baltach's Soviet home. Kiev, capital of the Ukraine. It's got a population of two and a half million, and it's the third largest city in Russia. Ipswich Town had an opportunity to look around during the summer, when they went to the Ukraine as part of their preparations for the new season. The tomatoes are nice in the court, but the caviar is not marked. Ukrainians aren't so indifferent to Sergei Baltacha, who they welcome back with bread, a traditional Russian token of peace and friendship. When I was a small boy, I think I was brought up, but, you know, to think that perhaps the, the West was wanting to fight the Soviet Union, was anti the Soviet Union, but the more I travelled, the more I saw that there was no difference between the ordinary people, the people in the Soviet Union and the people in the West. I, I must say that since I've been in Ipswich, I've never felt any hostility to me as a Russian. I can only say that this, all of this has been contrived by criteria, which is, has been objective. It's been sheer propaganda from our side and from your side to create the, the myth as if we both were hostile because our system is different.
Blenheim Hall, Suffolk, and an invitation for the Baltacha family to take tea with the Ipswich chairman, Patrick Cobbold. Come on in. Thank you. Right, okay. no, I think tea first. Tea first? <laughs> <laughs> Before I came, of course, my impression of, of a typical Englishman, I must say, was that it, they all wore top hats and carried umbrellas, were very straight-laced, never smiled, liked their family life very much, spent most of the time at home, thought that the home was, was the castle, and loved their children, liked being with the children, stayed at home, didn't go out to restaurants, didn't go to bars and spent most of the time indoors. But behind that facade, I knew that they were all very much uh, gentlemen and had a great sense of humor. But now, since I've been here, I realize that uh, they are just like the other European people that I met. Oh, oh Mr. Patrick, uh, Sergei Junior goes to the Ipswich School of Excellence. He's a very good little footballer. But unfortunately, the boys are all about two years older than he is. But Sergei tells me that he's coping very well. And That's very good. We're going this evening to see him at, at training, so we'll be able to see for ourselves what progress he's making. Better give him a drop of brandy. Encourage him. <laughs> not all Englishmen live in country houses, of course, but not all Soviets dismiss the trappings of wealth. I, I can't think negatively about it. You know, the family have earned that wealth and they, sh they should enjoy it. I can't understand why anybody should have any negative thoughts about anybody having such wealth. And it's, it's interesting to see that other people, even from the East, are going to the West in search of perhaps that, the possibility of becoming so rich. And it's interesting to me to watch the East Germans on television going to the West with smiles on their face, looking for uh, freedom and democracy. At home in Kiev, the Baltachas live comfortably by Soviet standards. <laughs> Sergei and his wife Olga enjoy certain privileges. So there's a car and a holiday home to go with his three-bedroom apartment in one of the most fashionable parts of the city. Hello. And it's here that we were invited in the summer to meet up with the rest of the family, their children, Sergei Jr., who's 10, and Ileana, who's 6. The children don't yet appreciate the changes taking place in the Soviet Union. They see Kiev as a big industrial center, a city with its share of old and beautiful buildings. But it's also a city with problems. The Ukraine is the biggest and richest of the Soviet republics, but the people are still poor. The average wage is only 70 pounds a week, and on the streets, there's growing unrest. It's an enormous problem. You've got to look at the Soviet Union uh, as, as a huge country. It's, it's a country with 15 republics. It's like a country with 15 Frances and 15 Germanys. And you also have to look at it as, as like Gorb Gorbachev, as if he has 15 children. And he has to look after the family. He has to make sure that each of the 15 children has enough to eat and enough to wear. And each of these children is pressing for more and more and he needs time to accomplish what he has set about. This is home for the Baltachas in Ipswich. There was a lot of fear and trepidation when we made this move. It was a move to a new country with my family, and of course we had worries. But we've been very happy the way we were adapted to life in England, and it's been particularly of great interest for myself and my family to live and work in a new country. As you know, I've had a lot of injuries. I've only just resumed uh, training. But I would very much like to continue, uh, sign a new contract and continue with Ipswich. And I'd love to play with Ipswich in the first division. 
because mainly I think the, the, the first division distinguished itself by class football, which is better the better type of football in the second division. And it's this kind of football which I'm longing for. I think that I've become far quieter and more restful and less agitated than I was in Kiev. The, 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 the life in Ipswich seems to suit me very much according to my wife. Play, Sergei, go, go on. Off you go. Finish. Great finish as well. When I first came here, I had, a, I must say, a terrible time. I, uh, the first months, I, uh, I thought, why, what the hell am I doing here in this country? I had a really hard time.